Hello Techies, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous video, we have learned uh, the creation of EKS cluster with the Fargate option. And in this video, we are going to deploy an application and access it using the load balancer. We can achieve this using the three simple steps like first one and the most important thing deploy or install the AWS load balancer controller on our cluster and the second one deploy the sample application using the manifest files like the deployment service files you know it and finally the act to ac accessing the our application using the load balancer created by the controller so to do this let me connect to the cluster so this is our cluster IKS cluster which we created in the uh, last video and let me connect to this I think we already connected to that let me list the ports yes I already connected and uh, here you can see only the core DNS ports are running the default ones and now we have to do these three steps to install the controller on the cluster the first one to create OADC provider and second one is to create IAM policy and the service account using that and the final one is install controller using help. So I have not done all the commands here so that we can use those and first one is to create OADC provider. Let me copy this and execute here. You need to change the cluster your cluster name in the iframe cluster name and just execute this it's already associated i think i already created it so let me go and delete and recreate that in identity provider and delete this yes delete it so i'll re-execute the command It is created again let me check let me do a refresh yeah, it is created the creation time is now so the OIDC provider is created next we need to create policy so all we all as we already in the IAM console just click on the policy and create policy and the permission needed for our controller on the AWS account we can get that from the JSON so this is the URL to get the JSON I'll share all these uh, links and commands in the description so we'll just browse this we'll get the JSON policy so these are, means these are the permissions needed by our AWS load balancer controller to handle the load balancer creation and updation and the easy to describe tags add tags so these are the permissions we can just copy the json and paste here and click next and give the policy name aws load balancer controller hyphen policy click on create policy Just click on view policy and copy the air policy ARN And go back to our commands again so we have created the policy and next one is to create service account so to create service account and attach the policy ARN which we created just now so I'll replace the ARN with the ARN we copied and the cluster you need to update the your cluster name the demo cluster in our case and the namespace and the name of the service account and the role that it will be created using this policy so just copy this and execute it 
seems I already executed this. Let me check again. Okay, we'll use iPhone iPhone as suggested override option. It is creating since I already created before, so that's why we got this. But if you are creating first time, it will be a smooth process. So internally it will create an, a cloud formation stack that's why I checked here earlier. So you can check also creation progress. The EKS CTL mostly uses the cloud formation and it was created. Okay, let me just clear the screen. And our next step is so we have created the policy and service account. So yeah, the step is to install the controller using help. So we can get the chart from the official repo. I'll just add this Helm repo. Okay, seems I already have added. And the next one is Helm command, Helm install. So Helm install, this is the release name, the AWS load balancer controller. And this is the path of the chart and we have to give the few we have to override the few commands in the chart the namespace and cluster name in our case the demo cluster and since we already created a service account the creation is false and the service account name since we uh, created the name using this name and we are giving the same name and the region and the vpc id in which vpc our cluster is created in the same region so i will just copy this and we'll execute AWS load balancer controller install so check kubectl get deployments or deploy iphone in cube system yes the deployment is not ready but it's, uh, in pending state, I think kubectl get pods iPhone and cube system. Yeah, the pods are in pending state, so we'll watch this. Add went already into the container creating and. The second pod also. Okay. I think it's done. So let me quickly check the pod status. We'll get pods iPhone A. Since we have only the pods in cube system, yes, the both pods are up and running here. You can see. So we have successfully installed a controller on our EKS cluster. So now we have to deploy a sample application and access. Up to now, step one is completed. We have successfully deployed the AWS load balancer controller. Yes. And the next step is deploy a sample application and access the application using the application load balancer. So for that, I have prepared a sample deployment and service files. So let me show, share with you the deployment.yaml, service.yaml and english.yaml. So let me quickly go through these files. So these are the basic files and I took Nginx latest image for the testing purpose and two replicas. You can go with the one replica also and then deploying all these uh, manifest files in the cube system namespace 
and you can see the service file as well i'm not going deeper into the files so the service file here is the service file i highlighted so same the iit port since the nginx use the iit port and the, these two files i think you guys know already and the major the important file is the ingress file ingress yes so here in same like did metadata name and namespace the annotations here the annotations are very important thing in the ingress file when we write the ingress file and here the first annotation means the load balancer name the name of the load balancer it has to create and the scheme like do you want internal or internet facing so which type of load balancer we want so in our case we want internet facing load balancer since we need to access the application from the browser and the target ips and what are the target group target groups those are the with ips so we have the some options in the target group like ips and the servers so we have some options there and since we are all on the ips the service so we took ips and next one is the subnets so in which subnets you want to deploy the load balancer so i have given the public subnet tidies to public subnet since i have to be my load balancer in public then only i can access the application from the browser and next specs and ingress class name as alb and rules path prefix and which service it has to go when the path is slash something like that so let me clear this and let me deploy the one kubectl play fnf first deployment yaml it was created and then service it's created so let me quickly check kubectl get ports the demo deployment ports are in pending state uh, it will come into the running state within no time and we'll check the service the demo svc created so we haven't deployed ingress yet we'll wait for the ports to be up and running We'll just do a watch here and we'll just check the AWS console on the for the load balancer if there are any load balancer uh, this is our console and the North Virginia region we are in so currently there are no load balancers here and as soon as we deploy the ingress file it has to create a load balancer with uh, the given subnet names in the subnet IDs Okay, the ports are up and running. This is the ports are up and running. So we'll deploy the ingress file. Ingress.yaml. It was created. Kubectl. We'll check once get ingress fna fna means all namespaces so it already gave us the address the dns name of the load balancer so we'll check from the aws console just refresh here that load it, it is creating the load balancer we'll check the subnet yeah, these two are my public subnets and default it will be on port eight. and we have two rules i think one is default and one is given the slash path right that is the priority one and the traffic goes to this target group and this target group nothing but it will hit our service the application service it is still on pending state
So we deployed the sample application also, the step two also complete, completed. And just we are waiting to access the application, the Nginx uh, web page. As soon as the load balancer state is active, we can use the DNS name to access that. And in the meantime, I want to show you something in the ingress file. So we have, let me just open that. So here in this line, we have given the subnets. We have just hot coded the subnets. So instead of that, we can just tag the subnets so that it will automatically fetch. The ingress will automatically fetch. Here you can see subnet auto discovery or, or AWS load balancer control auto discovers the subnet based on the tags. So if we have this tag to the subnet, it will deploy the application into the same subnet. Like we are, we have given the subnet IDs right here, the public subnet IDs. So instead of the giving the public subnet IDs directly here, we can just add this tag to our public subnets so that it will automatically discover the subnets. And for the private subnet also this one and the cluster name is common for uh, all subnets you can try this instead of uh, writing the subnet names there and there are so many annotations for this you can check the annotations page so you can give the group name ip address subnet security groups WAF rules and for ssl also you can you can get, have the annotation to route the traffic from IT to 443 and to attach the certificates. So what are the activities we can do from the console, from the load balancer console, all we can do in the using annotations here. You can check that page, I'll provide the link. And yes, uh, load balance is active. We'll just access using the DNS name. I have to get the engine XP. Yes. So let me look at here. CTL get ports. We have two ports. Yes. So success we have successfully deployed the application and access it using the load balancer. And we have not created any load balancer. The controller itself creates the load balancer. So the important thing in the entire process is deploying the load balancer controller itself. It is a major thing since the deploying application and accessing uh, the controller will take care of these parts. We just need to write the manifest files and the creation and the updation of the target group and the routing the traffic based on the path based routing. So everything will be taken care by the controller. So while deploying the con controller, we have to follow the three steps. OIDC provider and policy service account and using help we can deploy the controller. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching the video.